All right, let's take a little bit of time to talk about autoimmune disease and what might be contributing to it. You know, we're seeing autoimmune disease incredibly increase in uh, prevalence throughout this country and throughout the world. And so uh, some of you guys remember watching Scooby-Doo and, you know, at the end of the show, the kids would find the masked villain, the monster, and they would pull the, the mask off and it'd always be, you know, someone that, uh, you know, always was, you know, like a normal person hiding uh, and, you know, trying to figure out who the, who the real culprit is here. So let's do a little bit of that. And so let's go look at a few clues about autoimmune disease. And so we know that there is a often a very significant uh, inconsistent correlation between uh, inflammation and autoimmune disease. And so uh, there's research that shows that autoimmune disease often is an abnormal state of chronic inflammation. So something in our internal and potentially external environment is leading to this and causing problems with our immune system. Our immune system is trying to deal with this, but often uh, it, it, it results in self damage. Now this damage can show up in different parts of the body, whether it's in the thyroid, we see things like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If it shows up in our pancreas, we see things like type one diabetes. Rheumatoid arthritis is when it occurs in our joints. Uh, we think like Crohn's disease when it occurs in the gastrointestinal system. But no matter where it shows up, there's usually inflammation associated with this and it seems to progress. And the more it progresses, the more damage it does. Now, Autoimmune diseases also are associated with often hormonal disruptions. You know, obviously when you talk about thyroid disease, the thyroid produces a hormone. So we're gonna see things like that. Um, there seems to be some level of dysregula dysregulation in either, it can be insulin, it can be thyroid hormones, it can be sex hormones. Uh, there is usually an increase in some of the stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. So whatever is causing that, could it be pollution, food, mold, lack of muscle? maybe a parasite, you know, those things are all potentially on the differential diagnosis for potential causation. There is a significant link between gut health, intestinal permeability, and autoimmune uh, diseases. Now, being able to digest and assimilate nutrients is imperative for our health. If our gut has problems doing that, either it's from low stomach acid, poor motility, slow transit times, then it won't have some of the nutrients that it needs to, to help our immune system to fight off some of these issues. If there's specific damage to the gut lining, this can create holes in the gut, uh, which leads to uh, increases in intestinal permeability. There's always some level of permeability. Some things have to get through, but when we have this hyperpermeability, uh, we often call that leaky gut. Now, research has shown that there is a pretty strong link between leaky gut and autoimmune disease. Uh, this is because if you have holes in your gut, particles of food and other substances can pass through there, get into our bloodstream and get into tissues where they're not supposed to be there, and that can set off and trigger a autoimmune or immune system reaction. Inflammation then ensues, and then we have this, this sort of self uh, a perpetuating cycle. So autoimmune disease often starts with something in the gut. So could it be something we eat perhaps or something we drink? Well, that certainly uh, is, a, is a pretty strong clue. Now, we often see that sugar will make autoimmune symptoms much worse. There are a number of studies out there showing that sugar consumption will flare up autoimmunes. One disease showed that excessive sugar intake aggravated multiple autoimmune diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, and some other uh, inflammatory conditions. Another study found that sugar directly causes metabolic stress, causing increased reactive oxygen species and exacerbates autoimmune disorders. So the culprits of autoimmune disease seem to have something, at least in, in some degree, to do with sugar. So let's look at another clue before we um, come to any conclusions. Often when you properly nourish people, when you give them whole foods with high levels of nourishment, we often see a drastic reduction in autoimmune symptoms. And so because how stressful and damaging autoimmune diseases are to the gut, the body usually does not have enough internal resources to deal with the demands. So we have to get some of those resources externally through our food. And so when adjusts his or her diet, to include easily digested foods with bioavailable nutrients like meat, seafood, eggs, we often will see a reversal of those symptoms. Research has shown that eating a fasting mimicking diet or a ketogenic diet can regenerate damaged tissues, properly nourish the body, and over time reduce symptoms of autoimmune disease and restores one's health. So whatever is causing autoimmune disease probably leads to improper nourishment of the body. So if we look at some of the root causes of autoimmune disease, we talked about gut issues, chronic inflammation, nutritional deficiencies. And so our Western diet full of nutrient devoid, hyper-processed food with all kinds of potentially inflammatory ingredients is probably a large driver of autoimmune disease. And as we see, our diet begins, becomes more and more hyper-processed, 
autoimmune uh, frequencies goes up and up and up. Um, just, just you know, to, to, to provide a little bit of additional information here, I am aware of a number of studies that are starting to occur looking at autoimmune disease and diet specifically, and specifically looking at a carnivore diet to help treat those things. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what those studies actually show. Uh, more to come on that. I certainly will let you guys know about that when those studies are published. I'm anticipating the study should be complete completed by the end of this year. All right, guys, if you like this, uh, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to do the notification thing, all that, you know, smash those things, you know, bam, bam, <laughs> share this with somebody, and we will talk to you guys real soon. Thank you.